Hello. Today I want to talk about carbon credit vintages. And what I mean by that is that carbon credits are actually issued in a given year. So maybe you've had a project going for the last 10 years, and carbon credits will have been issued for 2013. And believe it or not, people actually care about which year they were issued. <laughs> and so this is why I wanted to talk about that, because I think that vintages right now are really not thought about in the right way in this space. So first of all, why do people care about vintages right now? If you ask people, one thing that they'll say about vintages is that they trust carbon credits that are issued in more recent years. And I think that there's some validity to this argument. In general, I would say that carbon projects have been getting a little bit better over time. If you look at an older carbon project, particularly one from like the CDM days, you're, you're more likely to see some shenanigans. Uh, but on the other hand, Older projects have just had a longer period of time to go wrong, and hence a longer period of time to accumulate shenanigans. So if you are looking at a carbon project from 2022, maybe that project will go wrong in 10 years from now, and maybe in 10 years from now they'll be playing all kinds of trickery to make sure that it still gets credits. But you really won't know that's the case until that happens. So I'm not sure that that's a valid argument. But there are really valid arguments for why carbon credits from older vintages should be valued higher than credits from, from newer vintages. So I want to talk about two, two big reasons here. The first is a, an environmental or, or biological reason. See, climate change is a positive feedback cycle. And what I mean by that is that as the Earth gets warmer, it triggers mechanisms that causes the Earth to get even more warmer which then triggers mechanisms that cause it to get even warmer still. And so it's a feedback loop. So let me give an example. If I were to go and put a ton of CO2 into the atmosphere, that would cause the Earth to get warmer. And that would cause the ice at the ice caps to start to melt. Now, ice itself, it reflects a lot of energy. That's why it's so bright to look at. That's why you can actually get sunburn under your chin if you go skiing. So the ice is actually cooling the entire Earth by just being there. So if I put a ton of CO2 into the atmosphere, that causes the ice to melt. Uh, and what's left there then is maybe rock or maybe water. And water or rock absorb energy a lot better than ice itself. I put a ton of CO2 into the atmosphere. The ice has melted. Uh, rock now is absorbing more energy. And that is causing the Earth to get warmer and causing the ice to melt more. And th so this is a positive feedback loop. And ice melting is not the only one. So the world is filled with these positive feedback loops. And what this means is that if you prevented CO2 or, or actually sequestered CO2 from the atmosphere 20 years ago, you have done a lot more to stop climate change than preventing CO2 from going into the atmosphere today. And therefore, from a strictly biological viewpoint, a ton of CO2 from 20, 10 or 20 years ago is a lot more valuable than sequestering a ton of CO2 today. And so we actually have it backwards. I mean, carbon vintage should, should age like fine wine. We should be outbidding each other to get older and older credits. So that's the biological perspective. But what about the financial perspective? I actually think the financial situation is, is kind of ironic because people would argue that they want newer vintages because they're more trustworthy. But from my perspective, it's quite the opposite. If you've had a project going for, let's say, 10 years, and it's a successful project, you know, there hasn't been any deforestation, you've planted your trees, whatever it is, that really speaks to your ability to maintain that project going forward. It also really speaks uh, to the fact that those credits are real. Now, not all projects from the past are good, but a lot of them are. And so really what I'm saying here is that you should be buying older credits. You should be paying more for older credits than newer credits. You just need to do your due diligence about which projects you support. Let's look at the other side of the situation. Right now, people are to, like scrambling to buy credits from the absolute newest projects. And this is just the stupidest thing you could possibly do. Because newer projects, there's no way of knowing whether or not they're going to be successful or fail. You know, it really takes something like five years or so for us to say whether or not an avoided deforestation project has actually stopped deforestation. And so there are a bunch of examples of, of new projects from just the last two years that have already been pretty much deforested. And, you know, those credits, you know, they got in the marketplace, they got snapped up immediately, and now they're, they're kind of worthless. 
So uh, why wouldn't you put your money in a project that you know uh, has been established, that has been working out well, and is gonna probably continue to work out well in the future? It just doesn't make sense from a financial point of view. Finally, I wanna talk about how silly the idea of vintages are in the first place. Now, in the case of sequestration credits, I guess they make a little bit of sense. Then you're actually pointing to a year in which a tree removed CO2 from the atmosphere. I guess if you polluted in the year 2020, maybe for some, for namesake, you might want to buy 2020 credits. It doesn't make sense to me, but maybe that's the rationale. But for avoided deforestation and IFM credits, it makes no sense whatsoever. Those trees are still there. The trees that from credits that were issued in 2012, they are still being protected today by the project. Those trees don't care if they're a 2012 vintage credit or a 2022 vintage credit. It makes no difference to them. In fact, they don't even actually segment out which trees are which. So there's, it's not as if when you buy a 2012 credit from a project that's 10 years old, you're, you're getting a credit that was sequestered in 2012. No, you're supporting a 40 year project that is ongoing, that has been protecting the trees and is still protecting the trees. Uh, and so, you know, from this perspective, it just doesn't make sense to have vintages at all. And if we do have vintages, once again, we should really be buying older vintages rather than newer vintages. The whole system just doesn't make any sense. And so the, the lesson, the takeaway here is don't rely on the date of the credit issuance to know whether or not you're getting a quality product. You have to rely on some sort of expertise because the protocols are so shabby today. And if you are relying on expertise, if you are sure about the project you have, older vintages are much better for the environment and much lower risk vintages to begin with. <laughs> so, you know, this is, this is my case for older credits. Always invest in the old ones because God only knows what that new, brand new 2022 avoided deforestation project is going to look like in three years. <laughs>